On a good day, begging earned me enough to buy a small loaf of stale bread. In the end, I had to rely on Judy to provide for me. But Judy wasn't a wealthy bourgeois. No matter how hard she worked, factory labor only paid her so much. She had barely enough money to feed herself. We shared what little food we had, enduring hunger on most days. We shared murky water to weather the sizzling summer, and we shared shabby blankets to survive the dead of winter. And so now it was not only I who suffered. This woman who had saved me was made to suffer for my sake as well. Boy, that would make you close. I mean, if you go through something like that, pathetic. That is why Judy, you know, so badly doesn't want to lose him. I mean, you basically have to love somebody to to share um, and to be willing to do that for somebody as she did. Pathetic. I pray to the gods to return my magic, but my magic never returned. I pray to the gods to help me, but no help ever came. I screamed and bellowed and cried to the gods to save me, but they never did. Still, I prayed. Each night before I fell asleep, I prayed to the gods. Please, don't wake me up tomorrow. But they never listened. And as was the case with all my other prayers, the nightly prayer was never answered. He just wanted to die, just like I just said. He wanted to die. He kept praying that he wouldn't wake up. Can you imagine waking up feeling dejected every morning because you're alive? Disappointed that you woke up despite every effort not to? Curses, curses, I'm still alive. That was my every morning, and it still is from time to time. I wish for relief. I wished for an end, an end to my suffering an end to a dream that would never be, an end to a false hope, and an end to everything. I wanted to die. From time to time, I thought of taking my own life. I imagined dying. I tried to figure out an easy and peaceful way to go out, preferably one that would inflict the least amount of pain. But I never tried, and not trying made me feel even more pitiful. I hated my life. I wanted it to end. I wished for the gods to take it away from me, and I was too much of a coward to do it myself. I'm pathetic. Man, look at her sad face. But each time I saw Judy, I knew that I couldn't kill myself. I owed her too much. She'd been struggling every day just so that I could live. If I threw away my life, I'd be belittling the battle she fought for every day. And I didn't want to disappoint her. Damn. In the morning, Judy and I go to Libertad's base. Along the way, we meet people who are leaving for work, ready to spend their day casting spells in a factory, exerting their mana, producing wealth for magical mechanical. But they won't be living this life for much longer. Our revolution will change everything. As we're walking, I notice an aged man sitting on the ground, his shoulder rested against the door of a house. His thin frame is shrouded in gloom, and there's no life in his downcast eyes. I've seen him before. He was there when I gave a speech to factory workers several months ago. Judy and I stop walking. I crouch down in front of the man, and he looks up. Amateus. He calls my name teary-eyed, his voice weak. Why aren't you going to the factory? I'm not working there anymore. Well, where are you working now? I can guess his answer. I'm not working. Amadeus, what should I do? The factory fired me last month. I've used up all my savings and I'm out of work. Why did they fire you? Because I could no longer do my job on two bottles of mana a day. They refused to give me any more potions. They said I wasn't worth the cost. I must be getting old. Ten years ago, I was still able to finish the day with some mana left. Now two bottles isn't enough for me. 
And what should I do now? I don't have money, and if I don't work, no one will hire me. The man is sobbing now. Tears are running down his cheeks. The sight of a grown man crying is heartbreaking. I want to die. Wow. Even when I still had a job, I never had a good life. And now it's worse. I can't take this anymore. Why are the gods doing this to me? Why are the gods letting this happen to me? Why aren't they doing anything? Why, Amadeus? Why haven't the gods helped me? Unfortunately, there are no gods who will protect you. The man looks away, tears silently running down his face. Look at your own life, and then look beyond it. Look beyond the pearls. Look beyond overture. Look at this world where men and women and children are killed and innocent people suffer every day. If the gods won't help them, they sure as hell aren't going to help you. If the gods don't hear their pleas, they aren't going to hear yours either. From all which I've seen, I can only conclude that the gods either don't exist, or they are a huge bunch of pricks. I'd bet money on the latter. Life couldn't be this fucked up without some divine intervention. Huh, wow. Damn. The man's sobs are getting louder. He buries his face in his hands. And I might as well just kill myself. If there's no hope for me, I'd rather just die than suffer every day. No, just because there's no hope from some god doesn't mean there's no hope at all. Be strong and take that shit life throws at you. Scream, howl, bawl, do whatever you have to do to cope, but don't die, not just yet. Raise a middle finger to the sky and shout fuck you, life. Do your fucking worst and not die, just to spite whoever it is that is passively watching us suffer. Listen to me, live for just one more day. You've endured shit your whole life. What's one more day to you? One more day? Yes. Do you think you can do that? Ah, uh, yes. But oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? The man is still sobbing, but his face paints a mark of hope. He stares at me, waiting for some promise of salvation. When tomorrow comes, live another day. I stand up and leave with Judy. Damn. So anyway, guys, this is the best visual novel I've ever heard you read. Yeah, it's uh, this thing really does play with your emotions. It's been pretty good. I've loved it. So I am impressed with you, AJ, that you're hanging out listening to this because as you can see, there's not a whole lot of people listening to this story. And a lot of young people like you can care less about a well-written story or a book or whatever. So you do have a pretty good open mind, AJ, for a kid your age. Uh, like I said, most people would rather watch. They want to watch, you know, Brutal Fighting or Dead by Daylight or, you know, um, Call of Duty or whatever. You'll get thousands of people watching a Call of Duty game, but nobody cares about a novel or a book, um, no matter how well it's written. And if more people understood the power of writing, uh, I think they would see that a game like this can be way better than a $60 AAA FPS shooter. Um, and even, you know, even really good TV shows and movies can't express their self the way that words can. So a really well-written story can be far better than a AAA, you know, big-time Hollywood effects, super uh, special effects movie because even special effects can't get across some things that words can get across. So it's been awesome. Uh, yeah, I love hearing this, and I couldn't be more thankful you, Zach, for reading it out. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of... Uh, one thing i got to say is there's not a whole lot of people on YouTube that read the kind of visual novels that I read. Uh, I guarantee you, I haven't looked yet, but I guarantee you there's been nobody else that's read uh, An Octave Higher or all of it like this. I don't think so, anyway. I know that I'm the only one that read Zombie Exodus, and Zombie Exodus was like 28 hours or something like that. And there was a few people that started reading Zombie Exodus, but nobody even got close to finishing it. And I was the only one. So, 
That is one thing special about me being a YouTuber. I'm like the only mofo that will actually read in a long story like this uh, to my viewers. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad, you know, somebody's out there enjoying it. So that inspires me to continue and keep doing it. If I had nobody watching, then, you know, I may not be inspired to keep reading. But I'm enjoying the story, and I guess as long as I'm reading it to myself, if somebody else can get something out of it, then, uh, then I'm happy to do it. Peace, everybody. Have a good day.